Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we have the opportunity to work on one of the newer reels that are out there. It's in the Ambassador line and they're pretty much the same for a long time. But this is the 6600C4. It's one of the ones made in Sweden. It's, a, uh, it's currently on the market. I think they probably sell for around $150, something like that. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to show you how to take this reel apart, how to service it, and how to keep it running for a long time to come. Well, we always start by uh, taking off the exterior pieces, and as I do, I always like to encourage folks to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That will tell you when I'm posting the videos, and well, you can make a decision as to whether that's one of those videos you want to watch. Uh, in this case, we're working on a round bait caster. Tomorrow may be a classic spinning reel, and the next day may be a conventional uh, offshore reel. It really depends on what shows up in my shop. And uh, with that, um, you'll get an education, you'll understand how the reels are made, and if you have one of them, you'll learn how to service it. We just took off the handle nut cap, and uh, that's going to expose a little e-clip here, and you need to remove that e-clip in order to remove your handle. Usually you can do that with finger strength. Uh, if you can't, use the pliers. Always be careful, these kind of have a little bit of a spring to them, and uh, if you uh, aren't careful, that little clip is going to fly away. Well, how do you prevent that from getting lost in the future? Well, I use a parts tray. It's the bottom of a fast food container. And I put all the small pieces and parts that I take off in that tray so that I can find them when it comes time for reassembly. Well, speaking of reassembly, sometimes we have to leave a project. We uh, get a phone call or maybe we just have to leave the building and uh, we leave a reel in pieces and parts and kind of forget how it goes back together. One of the best ways to solve for that is to take pictures along the way. If you take a picture of various stages of your, of your uh, project at critical points, that's going to uh, give you references when it comes time to reinstall. So you may see uh, the internal picture coming up. That would be a good place to take one. Uh, well, that internal picture would help you with the orientation of pieces and parts and so on. So I recommend that you do take the pictures. Heck, use whatever you like to take the pictures with. Doesn't matter. A cell phone, video camera, digital camera, whatever. All right, well, we're taking the four, the three screws that take the case off. And then I'm also removing the two screws which take the side plate off. You don't have to worry about the case screws, they're kind of held firm to the case, but these two are uh, traditional screws, and just note where they come from. Put them in a little separate part of your parts tray so that they're easy to locate, and uh, now we can pull this whole side plate off. When we remove the side plates, you're going to see the interior piece that's uh, got a uh, idler gear, and it's got a click mechanism on it, we'll take that off in a moment. It has your line guide assembly, and then it has your um, gear side plate. I'm going to take this off right now, just because a lot of folks that have serviced reels take these off, take all the pieces and parts off, and sometimes get stranded in terms of, oh gosh, where did it go, what was the piece or part, or so on. And then you're on uh, YouTube trying to find the the solution to getting your reel back together again. Well, I'm going to try and show you the interior just in case that is what's happening with you. And uh, if not, you'll kind of see how this sets up on the interior. One of the questions I get all the time is on that click mechanism. How is it mounted? Because sometimes it comes off and well, it's not, not that easy to put back together. There's three small screws. I'm going to put those right over here just off to the side because we will put this back on pretty quickly. Well, here's the answer to your click mechanism. Your click mechanism has the click ratchet, which overlaps on the bridge plate. It has two springs that hook on those two corners, and they attach to the wing, each wing of that click mechanism. When you go to install that, it's pretty simple. It just rides over the top. of the case, just like that. Now there should be two of these. I see one. There should be a second one. Here it is. 
and those go on there as well. Those are bridges to hold the post screws for that side plate. So any questions, that's how it gets installed. All right, there was just a little mucky kind of grease on here, so I decided to take that off when I saw that. Now this is a uh, petrochemical Teflon kind of a gear. You do not need to, to grease that. But what I do like to do is put a little bit of fishing wheel grease, no, fishing wheel grease, in the, the carrier there where the spool is going to lodge. If you wanted to, you could put a little bit onto the metal piece here. I prefer oil. And then we're going to take this and put that right back on again. Find your badge. The orientation should be parallel to the bottom. The two holes, one of them's got a stud and the other's got a screw. And you just mount that right back on there. I just noticed as I was putting this on that there is a little bit of, of uh, junk on the rim. So let's take a moment to clean that off as well. I don't know if that's sand or what that may be, but it's not going to be doing any good inside. All right, let's try this again. Put that back on. Make sure it snaps in place and that it's seated firmly, that you have no gaps on the outer rings. I can take that. The screws, put them on. While I'm doing that, I want to encourage you, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section. It doesn't have to be on this reel. It can be on this reel, of course. But if you uh, have a question about maybe Abu Garcia, the company, maybe about one of its competitors, maybe you're working on a reel that has nothing to do with a bait caster. You just happen to find this video. Uh, maybe you're working on a spinning reel or an offshore reel or whatever, and you're stuck. If you leave the question in there, I will try to give you an answer in terms of what the, uh, how to overcome your problem if it is a problem, and how to get you some more information uh, if it's more information that you needed. I uh, don't know the answer to everything. I'll try uh, to point you, but sometimes, well, I don't claim to know it all, and I don't know it all, and well, that's kind of it. All right, notice here. This is the back side of the reel before we remove the gear side plate. Notice there's a little hole here, right here, and that hole is going to correspond with the pin in this free spool release lever right there. That's very important that those two merge together. In other words, when you go to reinstall, that pin has got to go inside this little cavity here. If it does not go in there, you're not going to have a free spool lever that's operational. All right, the two screws that hold the side plate have been removed. They're in safely in my parts tray. Now we can pull up and out on the, uh, the gear side plate to remove that. When we do that, I like to just clean off the anti-reverse gear, the clutch, not the gear, the clutch. I've also just pushed through two little tension washers that will go back on reassembly. The clutch is a friction driven device so I do not recommend uh, greasing that. I just recommend cleaning it off, getting the dirt and debris out of the way so that those little uh, roller burners can catch the sleeve. This is the sleeve. We can bring this whole piece off right now. This whole thing will lift right off. When you lift that off, pay particular attention that there is a little copper washer right on the base of this that needs to be uh, in place in order for this to operate properly. Well, this is a, a mechanism that's shared with a lot of, of the uh, Abu Garcia Ambassador reels. And you just want to lift up on this. It's a plastic piece. It rides on two studs. This one's being a little bit stubborn. I'll just try prying it up a little bit. You want to be careful. You don't want to snap that carrier. Quite honestly, I've never snapped the carrier, but you do want to be careful that uh, if it is sticky, just take your time. Once you remove that, you can remove your yoke and your pinion gear. You can remove your jack. And you can remove the little trip lever there. And that's going to give you 
with the exception of that copper ring which I left on there. It's going to give you clear access to clean off this case. I like to use a penetrating oil as a degreaser and just the tools that we've been using before. I'm going to use a paper towel, see if I can't get most of that wiped off with the paper towel. And I guess some folks will ask me to go slow on the reassembly because they've got this far. They were able to take all the stuff off. And then, uh, well, they didn't take pictures along the way or something and it got a little bit uh, confusing as to how this goes back. I respect that. And I will go a little bit slower on the reinstall here. All right, so let's just kind of make it the way it would probably wind up here off the yoke as well. Now on this yoke you're going to notice that there's two sides on this. There's a side that's got an angle on it and there's a side that's flat. The flat side faces out. On your pinion gear you're going to notice that you have one side that's broad and it has notches in it and one side that's more of a gear. Well, that gear side faces out the notch side faces in. Inspect the teeth, make sure that they're all nice and, and clear. And then when you go to reinstall, find the ramped side and the notch side of your pinion gear. And you can snap that in place so that your notch side of the gear and your ramp side face in on the spool. They're going to go in just like this when it's time. All right, let's put this back together. I don't grease these pieces, but the first one is your carrier piece. That goes over the top stud. And this is actually the hole that I was showing you from the other side. When you push down on that free spool release, it's going to push this in. You can see the hole in the guide right there. And that's why the pin has to be in there in order for that to move down and in. Now we can take our jack, if you like, a light coating of grease. Don't put a lot on there. When this stuff dries, that's what, why you get a sticking free spool release. That just goes over the pin on the other side of that uh, release. And that bar doesn't get anything. It gets the, the carrier, but that's also a stop so that it doesn't go back up. All right. Now we can take our <coughs> yoke. In our pinion gear. Remember this is the side that faces the spool so that goes down next and then we have the carrier. This is clean. It's a spring driven device. There's a little bit of old grease on that one tag there. Let's get that off and then you just line this up. You'll see the two forks have to be resting on the yoke and then once it's over just snap it in place and that's the install. Just make sure that the outer post here and the outer post on this side here do not have any gaps. Well, that's the bridge side. Let's just do a little bit with the gear itself. You're going to take off the collar for the anti-reverse. We're going to remove the gear now. You're going to take note. These are carbon tex washers in here, it looks like. With Carbon Text, you have the option to uh, go ahead and lubricate them or not. But again, we're going to do this as if uh, you've got all your pieces and parts out there and you've kind of maybe become distracted and you don't know how this goes. So make sure your gear is nice and clean. Inspect the teeth of the gear to make sure that they're all oriented properly, that there's no chips, cracks, or noticeable deformity in the gear that would cause it to ride rough. And then go ahead and put a good amount of grease on there. You don't have to lube, you don't have to get the grease in every tooth. The uh, gear by itself is going to be bigger than the pinion gear, so it will spread due to the differences in the diameters. Put your gear shaft back on and then merge your, your main gear in make sure that it fits the pinion gear. We have a traditional six drag setup here. We have three drag washers. We have two keyed washers. 
one of these keyed washers, those are the ones that have the rectangular centers, has a, a bell shape to it. It's not flat. That one goes on top. First in then is a drag washer, then the flat keyed washer, another drag washer. The middle washer on a six drag system is almost always a eared washer. It has a circle for the center and two tabs. Those two tabs fit into the main gear. That's what they're holding when you clamp down on it for drag pressure. Put the last of your drag washers on. Put that bell washer on. And then very important here, make sure that this collar is free from grease. If it has grease or oils on it, it's going to slip when you're trying to operate that anti-reverse. Okay, the uh, inner case, we just need to do a little bit of cleaning, just that same part. So the, the, the grease has accumulated on the bottom here, and I got these reels from a fellow who hasn't been fishing them in some time. My guess is when it was stored, it was stored like this. That makes sense because the reel seat is down here, and whatever greases were in here ran and puddled to the bottom. I'll just clean it up before you uh, go to, to take it fishing again. That way you won't uh, get distracted or you won't get distracted by it. Let's take the gears. We're looking for these two holes and of course the center hole where this is going to go through. Put it down evenly and then make sure that it snaps in place that the two holes are inside the, uh, the mount. And again, just like we did on the other side plate, make sure there are no gaps here. If there's gaps there, then you haven't set something properly, and when you go to tighten it down, the reel is going to bind. So just make sure that as you're doing this, you keep it free of tension, and uh, if there is something that hasn't mounted properly, go check your work. Better to do it now than think you've got everything done, bolt everything back up, and then find out that uh, well, you've got to take the reel apart again because something isn't working right. A lot of the questions I do get in that uh, comment section are, I took my reel apart, it was working fine before I started, and now it's, uh, it's got a skip, it's got a bind, it's got something. And chances are, most of the time, that can be corrected just by going back in, redoing your work, checking what you were doing, and uh, getting, getting that back together. All right, these are the two tension washers that came out of the center. They are not flat washers. Don't attempt to flatten them. They're not designed to be flattened. They're crescent shaped. I like to take the crescent facing up on the first one and down on the second one. The purpose of these washers is to control the sensitivity of the star adjuster. That's this piece. So you want to, if you want a lot of tension, do it the way I just did it. If you want less, less tension, nest them. All right, we're going to put that on next. If you start spinning that shaft, just go ahead and hold it. Spin it that way. Sometimes you might need a pliers to hold it or something. Just tighten it down enough that uh, you can do that. All right, on top of the star adjuster then comes the uh, tension washer. It goes between the star adjuster and the handle. Then the handle. And now you're going to find that little C-clip or E-clip. I guess it's an E-clip. I tend to call them C-clips. Let's go ahead and put that one back on now. There's a groove on the top of the axle shaft. If you have the axle shaft set properly, that groove should be exposed. And that's how that clip sits now. Go ahead and get your nut cap. I like to start these by hand. This is a very easy uh, piece to cross strip. And if you cross strip it, well, you're going to have trouble going to have trouble in that it won't seat properly, your handle will be off askew, and chances are you will strip the threads, and well, you'll need a new gear shaft. All right, we're going to tighten that down. When I tighten this down, I'm looking to see if I can get this perpendicular to the hole. If you do that, this tie-down cap is almost always going to line up properly, like it did there. Okay, one more screw is left, and then we'll give it, a, give it one more piece of service, which is that line guide, and then we'll uh, put it all back together again. Alright, let's take a look at the line guide then. 
Best thing to do on the line guide is get it out of the way of the real seat. Move it over to one side by turning this uh, idler gear. And then you can use a screwdriver to remove the cap. That cap will reveal the paw. Sometimes it'll fall out. If it's particularly greasy and dirty, it won't. Sometimes you need to tap the bottom of the reel. Sometimes you can do it by continuing to turn. Whatever. Check your paw. Make sure that the, the points on both sides are uh, equal and not chipped or broken. Make sure there isn't any accumulated grease sitting on the shoulders. And while you're at it, look at the worm gear itself. It needs to be clean like this one is. If it isn't, hold a paper towel and turn your idler gear and that'll mop up the grease. You can also flood it with a penetrating oil, get it in there and, uh, and let it dissolve any greases. But right now that one's fine. Okay, I want to put this back in. My fingers are a little big, so I'm going to grab a, a little needle nose pliers to put it back in. And once you get it down, that's not going to work like that. So keep pressure on this. I'm trying to show it to you the other way. Keep pressure on that. Turn your idler gear and make sure that it seats down. Once you see it's turning, you've got that set right. I use oil. I do not use grease on worm gears. I just oiled the paw and I just oiled the worm gear. Now we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Again, just like the other one, it needs to seat properly, so take your time. Eventually you will get it. Okay, once it's tightened up, it'll be right flush with this. There shouldn't be a space. And again, go underneath here, move it, and make sure that it's turning nicely, which it is. Last thing then is just to, to go to your spool. You have a spool bearing under here. Go ahead and oil that. And I'm thinking we probably have a corresponding bearing under here. We do. Go ahead and oil that. You don't need to oil the plastic again. That's your setup for this. Let's go ahead and put that in. We've got that set. A little bit of grease onto the shaft of the spool. Now. Again, we're looking for the hole here for that cross line uh, for the free spool release. Pull this up when you go to mat, um, mate the, the two surfaces because the hole is to the outside of the case. Go ahead and line that up. And when you get a nice snap in the case like we just got there, that's telling you that everything is sealed and you can go ahead and tighten up your screws. Now the first one I don't like to over tighten. I like to make sure that all of these are tight first. I guess I got the clicker on there. That's all right. Get that fixed in a moment. I like to hand tighten them first. And then we can go back and tighten them with the screwdriver for a firm tightness. So these reels have been around a long time. They've proven themselves in all kinds of situations. And this is the latest, one of the latest additions on this. All right, give it a crank. This one's a little tight. So go ahead and just back off your spool adjuster a little bit. Wow, that was over tightened. And now it'll fly. There you go. And I just had a question from somebody. They had done replacement bearings on a reel. And they, uh, they said it's not operating as smooth as they thought it would. Well, sometimes those replacement bearings need to be worked in a little bit. All right, free spool down. We're spinning. We're doing what we should be doing here. And then, importantly, does it pop up? Pops up. So that's it. 
This is your Abu Garcia 6600 C4. It's a beautiful reel. The last thing you want to do to keep it beautiful is just use a little bit of rod and reel cleaner just to kind of polish it up a little bit. It's a, it's a cleaner that's going to work to take off uh, salt and residue and films and the like. And it's just going to be a little bit of a, a kind of a polisher or wax as well. The one that I use is, is made by Pen Reels. I like it. It works. That's it. Okay. A beautiful reel. The Ambassador 6600 C4. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Again, please subscribe if you want to see more of these. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing you great fishing.